Welcome to the complete collection of Gary Payton's greatest stories told by NBA players and legends. If you have missed any of the other episodes within the series, there is a playlist link in the description box down below and on the top right of your screen. If you click on that link, you will find all the episodes within the series. And these videos do take me a long time to edit, so I'd really appreciate if you guys could hit that like button, subscribe if you are new, and if you want to be notified when a new episode releases, be sure to hit that notification button. Now, if you're an OG fan of the channel, you would have known that there was a Gary Payton episode that was released over a year ago, but this is a new and updated version, and there are so many stories in here that weren't in the original one. So, without further ado, welcome to the complete collection of Gary Payton's greatest stories told by NBA players and legends. I watched GP back down the guard from uh, baseline to baseline, talking the whole time. <laughs> he looks at me, I'm like, what the hell this dude is doing, bro? And I think at that time, like, you know what I'm saying, he's just yelling, right? And I'm like, what's up? He goes, you tell me. <laughs> I used to tell my guys before the game, no matter what Gary says, don't talk back to him. Because we do not want, we let the, we, that's saying you heard, let the sleeping dog lie. You know, my ego was a little big and thinking that, hey, this, I, can, I know I can get a, a shot off. And uh, he might be good, but uh, he was right. He, he didn't let me get a shot off. And, you know, that kind of hurt my ego. We Pull switch. Up. Yeah, we a switch. He got the big man on him. He posted him up. That's when I knew I was in trouble. <laughs> he talking to me. He, play, he calling the play. He throwing the ball like yo and still scoring the ball, stealing the ball. And then you take his heart from him and then you go down and kill him on the other mm. end. Trash talking is an art. I think probably to me, I may have missed some guys, but you and GP were the best at it. Where'd that come from? I'm in the top 10. Uh, I might not be top five. I'm top six. I always say that the trash talking, you got to be able to back it up, right? Thanks. So the first thing about trash talking is, uh, I, I would I would actually consider who was talking to trash, and then if they had the ability to back it up to whether I was going to actually engage with somebody. Kerry Payton and Charles Barkley was two of the arguably best trash talkers I ever experienced. I saw Gary Payton control the referees. His coach, my coach, the crowd, <laughs> the lady in the front, the guy who was on the side of the Minnesota game sitting in the bucket. He was controlling the whole mm -hmm. game. So we had a KG back at All-Star, and we were just talking about the game and the history of the game. And obviously your name always comes up, obviously as one of the great point guards, but also one of the great shit talkers. And he told us a story how you <laughs> you backed someone down from half court and you had the, you was in the ref's ear, you was in the defender's ear, you was in the coach's ear, you was talking shit to everyone all by all white still running your team. It's magical. I watched GP back down the guard from uh, baseline to baseline talking the whole time. <laughs> Shut your ass up. Bow up twist. Hey, get his ass in here. Hey, come up. Hey, you see the hand on the hip, call it if you see. Like he just <laughs> that sound like it. Finally hit me. I'm like, how is GP managing all this? He talking to me. He, play, he calling the play. He throwing the ball like yo and still scoring the ball, stealing the ball, affected. In the in the huddle, he in the huddle, he got the thing, he drawing it up. Yeah. I'm like, yo, GP to me was like masterful. Hey, people don't understand how hard that is to be able, okay, one, you you got a, a, a guard guarding you from taking the ball out. You talking to him, telling him he ain't finna take the ball. The coach saying something to the player while you while you dribbling. You tell the coach to sit down. One of the fans <laughs> say something. You tell the fans. You tell the fan, don't worry about it. I got this. He hand checking. You talking to the ref. Hey, get his hands off me, ref. Get his hands off me, ref. Then you telling your then, then, then you telling the player say get over there, get over. There. I got this. You backing him down. I, I, hey, people don't understand how hard that is to control the whole game. Only great players yeah. can control the whole game, dog. And nephew, and that's it was multitasking good. at its finest. Yeah, and then you know why it was so cool? Because I had a coach that let me do whatever I wanted to and Coach George Call. So, you know, I used to always call the plays that I think was more effective for myself and then get my, my teammates involved. So I used to call a play called One Up, 
where I get on the left side and it just be one, it just be one. And when uh, Kevin was really talking about it, it was on that one side where I turn my back and I bag them down, but I'm talking to everybody at the same time. <laughs> and then if the guard, if the player, he try to he try to come and try to steal that moment, I'm gonna spin on his ass and he threw. And then he gonna be all bad. So even though it was one of them plays where you, nobody could defend it. Uh, Gary Payton actually used it to get fouls, mm -hmm. to get his teammates fouls, to uh, get guys in and out. Like he was just, con he was just a control freak. They didn't know what the hell to do with it. So I took it to advantage and then I still start killing them. And it was fun to me, man. That shit was hella fun just to basically know I could control somebody with my mouthpiece and then affect them in the game. You know, and if you went to a party with Gary, he's doing the same thing. What a dream set. Hey, see, well, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, hey, what's that, baby? You need an extra? Yeah. Y'all ain't drinking? Shots over yeah. here. Yeah. Hey, Shaq DZ. What's going on? Kazam. Get them out of here. Who with me, man? Who with them? <laughs> right. All right. What's that, baby? All right. Yes, sir. Uh, KG. OBF, man. Original black family, baby. All right. All right. Here go my boy, JK. Boy, I don't know what you was doing trying to be. Uh, did this rob me little brother, but you something else, man. Remember this nigga didn't rob me little brother? Man, I was trying it, man. I don't know what he was thinking about, but it's my boy, man. What was hey, Kay. <laughs> I was just like, okay, this is GP. This is just who GP is. <laughs> then I get drafted, and I could, and then I have to guard Gary Payton man. every day. Talk practice. about that, dude. That was GP, G bro. GP, dog. Let me tell you about the first time I met GP. Because Ross, Ross Strickland just told us a story that uh, he said G, uh, he get into the league, he go to the hole, yeah. and GP just flat out just puts him in the stands. <laughs> <laughs> hey, G, hey bro, GP, what dog. is wrong with GP, bro? So, you look, we play a pickup. This is before training camp. GP doesn't play. He, he walks in late in some overalls, right? Oh, my God. Right? He, he is straight. He's straight R and B thug, right? He walks in with some overalls, and we playing. And he just wanted to disrupt the whole game. He yells, "Hey, hey, hey, hey! Hold, hold the fuck up! Hold up!" <laughs> he looks at me. I'm like, "What the hell, this dude is doing, bro?" And I think at that time, like you know, what I'm saying he's just yelling, right? And I'm like, "What's up?" He goes, "You tell me." <laughs> I'm like, "I'm so lost, dog." <laughs> I go, what do you mean? He goes, what do you see out here? Dude, he literally just walks in the gym. He don't see any. I go, what do you see? He go, I see your team tired. I go, yeah, we've been running for like almost two hours. He said, call a timeout. I was like, and pick up? He's like, yeah, call a timeout. I go, all right, timeout. I'm like, now he's like, everybody get some water. Your team tired, you call timeout, don't you? I'm like, all right, this dude just want to be an asshole. You know what I mean? I've never, I done played pickup four years in a row with Magic Johnson. We ain't never called no damn timeout. Like, you know what I mean? Like, But it is the truth, though. I mean, that's the thing about it. You call timeout hey, in a pickup game ever? Hey, bro. Have you hey, ever called a timeout in a pickup game? Are you going to let Are you gonna let dudes get some water? <laughs> and the rest. Duh. Duh. So I'll call a timeout in a pickup Okay, that was my introduction to GP. Is the rumor true that you might have had something to do <laughs> with practice? You know what, Chris? What, what it was was we were out somewhere and we were all out having a good time. And we had a little bit too many. You know, we had a little bit too, too many. many. Waters. And he asked me, he said, what do you keep? How do you keep your body in so good of a shape and do, don't get hurt and stay always on the court? <laughs> And I just told him for real. My coach, George Carl, didn't let me practice. So that was it. I said, you have to stop practicing. I brought it all afloat about the practice stuff. Let's let everybody know what you really was talking about. Uh, I had just left a meeting with Coach Brown and Billy King. They assured me that a trade wasn't going to happen. So in my mind, I'm thinking once we get to the arena and we do the press conference, all we're going to discuss is the fact that I'm not leaving, that I'm staying. If I'm the best, if I'm a superstar, then why is this happening, man? Why is this going on? Why do my daughter got to deal with this? Right. But all of the questions were coming, practice, 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 practice. Everything was about practice. We're in here talking about practice. 
I mean, it, listen, we talking about practice. Not a game, not a game, not a game. We talking about practice. And I didn't handle it the right way. I wish I could do it all over again, but I can't. We had just lost. Right. You know what I mean? We put out the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm thinking it's a, a, a good press conference to where as I'm coming in, I'm letting the fans know that I'm not going anywhere. We talking about practice, man. <laughs> we talking we talking about practice. We talking about practice. We ain't talking about the game. We talking about practice, man. And they kept asking me about practice and I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> and what, was your, what was your reaction after you saw the press conference? Oh, no, not this. Don't say it like <laughs> that, Alan. Don't do it like that. But when he said it, and I said, no, that was not our conversation. So buddy. essentially you were telling him not to practice. So then he takes that, goes back, and hence the famous <laughs> practice? Or... And I seen the interview, and I said, no, don't do that to me. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it gets back to Larry Brown, and Larry Brown approaches me when we played him, and he said I had created something, Wait, but Larry I didn't. Larry Brown came to you? Yeah, he came to me after a game where we played him, and he said, <laughs> look what you've created. And I said, Coach, I did not create that. You know, I said, I told him what my coach let me do, and I know you're a different coach, so don't get that to me. Don't do why, that. Why didn't you just say, Coach, I was drunk? I don't know what I said. I should have just said, Coach, I'm drunk. Yeah. That's all I'm saying, Coach. I was drunk. We, we're playing in Seattle, and I catch the basketball, and, and all I hear is, all right. <laughs> I, I can't repeat what he was saying. But, and I'm holding the basketball, and I'm looking at him. And then I, I had to turn around and like, is, is, he, is he really talking to me? Because he was talking so much trash. Was it shocking? Like, hey, I had to do it. I didn't, I didn't I know him, to. though. Yeah, he didn't even, Isaiah didn't even know who I was. Really? I yeah. No one knew who you were. You were nah. just talking? I yeah. stopped for about five seconds. We, the game was going yeah. on. I was dribbling the ball, and he was talking. And I picked up the ball just to, like, look at him. Hey, before we get out of here, we were, we, uh, another reference, we spoke to KG one time, and he said that one time you pulled KG and Kobe aside and taught him some shit on defense about when to go after the ball, and then Kobe applied it. It was a little back and forth, but... We was in, uh, the, 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 everybody's talking about the 20th anniversary of Vince uh, winning the dunk contest in mm -hmm. Oakland, right? What y'all don't know is that Kobe Bryant, rest in peace to my dog, mm -hmm. he one. took another level of being a defensive standpoint because Gary Payton at the practice, at the, at the practice, all-star practice, pulled us to the side because Kobe asked him something. Kobe was just a little different. He, he didn't have no, he didn't have no ego. But I'm not, as a meaning he did have an ego, but I'm saying an ego and asking OGs what to do. <laughs> And, well, and how to be, become better. And when he came to approach me at the All-Star game and asked how to become, how to get, make first team all defense, and I sat there to, at, the, um, at the, um, the center court and taught him a lot of things. He pulled both of us to the side and said, let me tell y'all something. Look, when you're playing defense, and then he went through a 30-minute joint mm, with both of us tutorial. with defense. I said this young kid has a lot of different a lot of different things in him. He's got a lot of a different mentality. And he kept asking me stuff. Every time he played me and I posted him up and I got it, he would always come over to me and, and, and sneak it in my ear. Oh, gee, man, why you keep killing me on these post-ups, man? You got to teach me that. What should I do? And that was just a big thing for me to hear that and to respect that. And I couldn't do nothing but respect it and teach him the game because I know I'm a lot older than him and I was going to be leaving the game soon. And I want to see somebody in that game that imitates the things that I do and can be dominant at it. And this kid was one of them guys. And I, and I taught him everything that I needed to tell him. Reaching and how to reach and when you reach up and just little tricks of the trade that next time I saw Kobe after the break, he was using it. Came first team that year. Yeah, it was one of my favorite players I've ever played with. Let alone, you know, when I, the, the all-star game that we had in, um, in Oakland. He helped me become a great defensive player. He told me one thing. He said, Kobe, you got to move your puppies. <laughs> after he told me that, everything, everything clicked for me after that, man. I started making all defensive teams. And he made the, the uh, first team all defense with me that year. I said this mm. young kid has a lot, of different, a lot of different things in him. First time I seen him, I said, you used that shit GP show. He said, you saw it, you saw it. I got his ass, you saw it. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. Bitch ass nigga. I saw it. I, saw it. I caught that shit. You think I saw it. But, but I knew that only the three of us was part of that. So I was like, 
Mm-hmm. You did the rip. You got the rip. Yeah, you saw that shit. I thought it was gonna call a foul. You didn't call that shit. Say, wow, because GP taught us when you rip somebody to go through their chest versus using your hand. You see this, right? He told us to take a step and come through your chest and come and then round out. There's no way you can protect the ball. You can't cross it back. Come once you get middle. in there, once I'm in your cab, you can't cross it yeah, up. You would yeah. even have to turn your back. Oh, man, I saw Kobe take that first night. After the break, I saw it. You know, we wasn't no texting and none of that back then, but when I first saw him, I shot there. It stayed right here when I saw him. He knew exactly what I was talking about. Students of the game. Shout out to GP for that, yo. No doubt. Who is the most scared of you? Well, Jason Kidd, who I raised, was really, really scared of me. Meeting Gary uh, was through his dad. His dad was an all-star coach, and uh, Gary used to, you know, stop by and uh, watch us play. And, uh, you know, our relationship started there when, uh, you know, Gary was at Oregon State, and I was still, you know, growing. I was still in my diaper, still playing. Gary kind of had Jason as a little brother, and he taught him the ropes how to be tough. He was kind of soft at first. His dad always told me, you know, you got to, we got to, you got to go play with Gary, GP. You got to play with GP. You got to go play with the guys and uh, learn how to play this game because you have a lot of talent. As time went along, you know, I was always behind Gary. Wherever Gary was, uh, little Jason was right there with him. You know, he toughened me up a little bit. You know, being, you know, a guy who likes to talk, he talked a lot of trash and, he, uh, you know, would say, hey, you're not going to score. Actually, you're not going to get off a shot today when we do this drill. And I'm like, you know, my ego was a little big and thinking that, hey, this, I, can, I know I can get a, a shot off. And uh, he might be good. It's basketball. I can get a shot off. And uh, he wouldn't let me get a shot off. But uh, he was right. He, he didn't let me get a shot off. And, you know, that kind of hurt my ego. You know, he would, you know, talk trash and like, you know, you're going to go home and cry. But... You know, the big thing was, he said, you know, he would never say it at the time, but he wanted to see if I would come back the next day. And I would come back, but I would, you know, my ego and my game was a little wounded. Gary is one that loves to, uh, you know, chit-chat, you know. <laughs> he loves to talk to guys on the court and fans. So I was with Dallas and we were playing Seattle and Tacoma. I'll never forget this. Um, we're playing in um, Tacoma. This is, uh, I'm in the NBA and I'm playing for Dallas. Um, I, I'm, a rook, uh, I, I'm a rookie playing against uh, Gary, and, and so we always, you know, looked at each other, always said hi, um, but once we got, you know, after the tip ball, we were, you know, going at one another, and I'll never forget, um, he's posting me up, and I pretty much kind of know what he likes to do, so he went into his move, and um, I blocked it, and I told him, get that stuff out of here, but I didn't say stuff. But I, and he, he looked back at me, and uh, and I said, "Get it out!" And uh, he see, he said, "What?" <laughs> and he, you know, and I said, "Uh oh." That was a big mistake. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he went on like a 15-0 personal run. Gary runs off the screen, stops, pops, three in the air, got it. Nothing but that. 18 points for Gary Payton. Uh, and then we ended up losing the game. <laughs> so I went after the game and I said, hey, look, my bad. I had, a, I, had a, I had a mental block. I forgot who I was playing. I didn't mean to say that to you. He said, oh no, you woke me up and that, and that definitely helped me. But I said, don't worry about it, I'll never happen again. I guess best or worst uh, trash talker. GP. I played with GP, I played against GP. He, he just didn't care. And the crazy thing about GP on the court, he was like that off the court. Like if he saw you in the mall, <laughs> maybe that time I crossed you up, big fella, and I gave you that thing, you know, that, and you almost put your arm out of socket. You ain't call me, boy, I'm a Hall of Fame. I'm first ballot, boy, I'm first ballot. Gary Payton. Ooh. Gary Payton. Uncle G. It was, uh, it was seven minutes seven, eight minutes of a ass whooping he was giving me. So you gotta know where your man is even though you're watching the penetrator. Peyton right back at him. Peyton all the way. Technical whistle, he can block shots. Peyton spins away from Arenas, that's well done. Reach of Mike Dunleavy. Three, Peyton, yes. Tie for Murphy. Peyton. Cassell leaves it for Gary Street. Yes! It was just one of those things where he had, what, 17? <laughs> All 
on me in that first five minutes. Like it was the first <laughs> time in my career, like the first and like especially early career. You know, when you early you, you dominate Where's high school, college. Shit? No, no, he wasn't saying nothing. That was a problem. <laughs> that was, that was, was a problem. Scary. He was just scoring. He was just scoring. So it was like, soon as I got on the court, like when I when we started, we got the ball, and he did that little smirk. <laughs> It threw me head. off already. Like, oh shit! I, like I just picked the ball up. Like I'm not even near the dude. I just picked it up and threw it. Like ah, I guess he already <laughs> realized. Okay, he done. Like, <laughs> so he I, I didn't scare him, so he didn't need to talk nothing. I got subbed out. I ran off the court so damn fast. Like, Woo, <laughs> man! Oh, that motherfucker nice. Like I'm, like it was one of those things. I was like, I don't, I don't think I want to go in with he. In. And then he got subbed out, and some, the Weber came in. I don't know who he is, but I can say, I, I can go against him. Yeah. Coach, I'm ready. <laughs> it was yeah. one of those. At halftime, like when uh, when I got back in, he was like, "You lucky I ain't the AI type of. I would have scored fifty against you." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you right. You right. I ain't gonna lie. She was, <laughs> you hey, what was, are you? He was posting you up. Everything. Like, it was like drive, like driving, roll, posting. We switch. Up. Yeah, we a switch. He got the big man on him. He posted him up. That's when I knew I was in trouble. Like he got Eric, like Eric Dampier switched on him. He backed backed him up, spent, faked it. And I'm like, ooh. <laughs> it's not ooh, just me. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, this ain't this ain't the NBA I'm ready for. Yeah. Ernie, Chuck, and Kenny, I have yeah. a confession. What's yeah. that? Gary made up barbecue chicken, not me. Get out! Did yeah. you really? Is this yeah, another yeah. story? Is that another barbecue chicken is yeah. not. Shaq gonna give up all our little yeah. secrets. Yeah. Man, that's your yeah. barbecue chicken. Yeah. Gary always used to look for me. Like, so every now and then, I like to, you know, show my Akeem Olajuwon and you go to my fadeaway, and Gary be like, "No, man, barbecue chicken. He just has like some barbecue <laughs> chicken." Don't shoot another fadeaway. Don't shoot another fadeaway, man. So that's a, that's a true yes. story. Yeah, it's that a true is, story because oh, yeah. I used to always yeah. tell him, "I was like, man, you got barbecue chicken up in there." Man. <laughs> Up, <laughs> Go in there and get the ball, man, because you know Phil used to always talk yeah. about. Go to Kobe's side. Nah, player, we ain't going to get it back if we go over there, man. Let's go over here. He can double, kick it back out, man. We good. Or we got barbecue chicken in there. So that's how it was. Hey, what's, what's the best? Because, you know, everybody knows what kind of player you were, Gary, and a great defender. And, and, but you, you also talked. And he's so, so barbecue chicken is attributed to you. What do you think when Shaq and the fool he yeah, made up to? When people no. when people are telling stories about, oh, I remember when I played Gary Payton and he said this. What's your what was your best line? What was your best smack Ooh, talking? You post? can't repeat what I already I can't say, repeat what yeah. I used to say. Yeah, I'm right. cutting them deep. They, they you want know to what cut I it asked? Deep. It was funny. I remember the because a lot of people want to like now the NBA they'll ask you, do you want to go on these trips? And you kind of be ambassadors. And I'm always, my first question is, is Gary going? Because if Gary's going, then I'm always going. Because we sit in the back, and I just, I'm in tears, literally tears. But I asked him one time, I said, Gary, you never really talk trash to me, man. Like, I was waiting for it. He's like, oh, you ain't, you ain't really get into that. So I just went to Vernon. Like, you wasn't even getting into it. So you were just, I was like, oh, my God. Did you ever talk God. trash to, uh, to Jet? No, no, no. Kenny wasn't really that type of guy. You don't know what type of guy you want to go at, and then Kenny don't go at you like that. And then I, you know, I, I'll talk to Chuck because, you know, he verbal, you know, and he try to punk a lot, a lot. <laughs> Stop, man. Yeah. He, he, he like to punk a lot of my guys, and I used to have to run up on him and, and do that. So, but Kenny wasn't the dude. I wanted Vernon more. I yeah. wanted Stop oh, him that, and Vernon. Man. <laughs> yeah, I wanted Vernon. He couldn't, man. Come on. Leave that alone. Leave that alone, <laughs> man. He brought him and, but the crazy thing, him and Vernon would go so hard at it, and then right after the game, they meet yeah, at the same yeah. place, yeah. restaurant yeah. to eat. And we'll be right together. Okay, we got, we got some photos up upstairs. Okay, so what are they saying? And some days I didn't go in there, Kenny, having it all. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to play sometime. And when that trash started mm -hmm. coming out, it made my competitiveness come out. Okay. And when I started going at it, and then when the players started getting used to me and they was like, man, don't talk to him. Don't talk to him because he's going to get it going. Right. And the coaches do it. Then I would go pick the referee or I go pick somebody in the stands. And then, you know, them fans, they always want to get <laughs> at it. So, right. yeah, it's, it, you, you, I'm going to go at you. I used to tell my guys before the game, no matter what Gary says, don't talk back to him. <laughs> because... <laughs> We do not want, we let the, we, that's say you heard, let the sleeping dog lie. <laughs> well, how about this? How about being 18 years old and Gary Payton, you laying in the city at 2 in the morning and he tell you, hey, Pert, 
I need a bottle of Patron. Mm -hmm. And I say, hey, hey, get a GP, man. I'm, I'm 18 years old, man. I don't even know if they're going to let me, you know, well, I'm going to find some liquor at the liquor store closed. Mm -hmm. What can I find liquor at? Oh, you better go to the club. So I got to come out of $500 no. to get in the club because I'm 18. Right, so so they they hesitated to even let me in. And you didn't tell them like I'm from the Celtics, like you, it, you didn't want to say anything. I was anything? so irrelevant. Nobody, unless I wasn't playing. Like if you wasn't a, like it's so, a okay. Sad story. Not not on top of that, that's to get in. Now I gotta go talk to the owner, and I gotta spend a thousand dollars just to get a bottle of Patron for him to let me leave out the club with to bring the Gary Payton. Okay. So then when I go knock on the door and say. Here, Gary, here go your bottom Patron and also your iron clothes that you left out, that your dicky suit that you sent to my room. <laughs> yeah. And you called downstairs to check to see if I sent it down there to be pressed yeah. to make sure I ironed it. Yeah. What? Hey, appreciate you, young fella, and slam the door in my right. face. So, okay, <laughs> he, made you do, he made you do all of that. Can right? you match that? No, <laughs> I can't match that. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> that, that ain't right. Why did he need a bottle of Patron at 2 a.m.? Because he needed it, man. <laughs> hey, 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 Joel, man, I'm copping the plea, man. I don't uh, know what hey, Big Perk talking about, hey, man. You're hey, a good dude, hey, man. Hey, I don't ask no questions, oh, man. man. GP was GP. Someone had to ask it. We're going to play against Utah, right? I think it was like an exhibition, maybe. like John Stockton. John Stockton. John so Stockton. I've never heard GP say anything good about any point guard ever in my life. He never said anything about you because he knew I was close to you. So mm -hmm. he'd be like, that's your boy? I'd be like, yeah. He'd be like, how close are y'all? I'm like, close enough to where if we get on the court, we probably fight. <laughs> okay. That's all he was saying. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> John Stockton, right? He goes, hey, this boy right here, cold white boy. <laughs> you don't take this for granted. You hear me? <laughs> this is a, you know, this, this is a blessing for you. You know, when you, when you face him, it's Mr. Stockton. He wasn't tougher you than just, Jordan. Yes, he was. You just oh, didn't. Yes, on, he was. Gary, you guys didn't Gary. play against him. I did. Gary, be honest. I don't, I'm I don't off the set. I, I played against I quit. that man. Gary. Hold on. He was let, me, let, me, let me ask you. Forget you just, the clock for a second. Let me ask you this seriously, because when you say that, people are going to be like, are you joking me? And they did today. A lot of people. Right, I know. A lot of people. So and let me I got to get a, not enough just, time to explain Not just based off the number of times that you saw John Stockton, but you're saying that he was more fundamentally sound than Michael Jordan. We were more athletic than he was. We were mad because he said picks and said he was dirty. If a guy comes and shoots 12 times, makes nine of them, shoots eight free throws and makes seven of them, that's 20-something points and have 15 assists and four steals a game and works out with Carl Malone and can deal it on a continuous basis and I have to play against him nine and seven and nine times a year, that is hard Gary, to call. No, I Gary, believe that. Gary, let's be honest. You just didn't like playing him because he, nope. he, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't talk back to you. True, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's a, that's a thing, too. Damn, I'm like, yeah, okay, bro, like, you know. I, I love John Stockton too, but I'm gonna pick him up full court. Yeah. I get in the game, pick him up full court. I'm like, damn, this dude got like, you know, I'm like 21, just turning 20, telling this dude got real chest hair coming out of his Duh, jersey, dog. Like, leg hair. Yeah. <laughs> He's like a grown ass man. Yeah, he needs to yeah, he like, you know I mean? manscape. Oh man, grown ass man. <laughs> so I'm picking him up full court. Man, Stock didn't have a lot to him, but he hit them angles quick, right? Uh -huh. Boom, 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 boom. And Stock ran his, his offense from inside college three. Because if you touched him, it was a foul. So, like, you know, you boom, boom. And I remember you get inside college. Like, he ain't not he is not about to walk me to the free throw line hey bro, and run the play. He is about to walk you to the free throw line so, every fucking so, time. So, so check this out, Doc. So, I like, I, I stand him up, right? Uh -huh. And it, when I stand him up, we bounce off each other. And the ball go right past my face. I duck. I'm thinking it's a back door. No one's behind me. He was throwing the ball. He threw the, the ball at my face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yo. I look back at him. He said, back the fuck up. I'm like, yo, let me tell you something, dog. It's one thing I can't do hey, is go back to my hey, hood hey, hey, and get punked by John Stockton, hey, who's a great. I got to pick him up again full court. Hey, dog, John Stockton but, was a bully, yo. A bully, yo. Hey, bro. But it was, a, it, was, it was also like that invisible test. Mm -hmm. If they could punk you, they would punk you. Yep. But if they wasn't going to punk you, then they respected you. Yep.
What was your best line? What was your best smack talk? You folks? can't repeat what I already, you used I can't to say. I repeat what yeah. I used to say. Yeah. I used to get on everybody. We was talking about it with Chuck. Chuck didn't know that I used to talk about their mama, their daddy, <laughs> their sister, their brother. I didn't care. Is it true that you once told someone that you're not going to even be in the league next year, and then you found out later that you actually hurt his feelings? Yeah, I did. You know what? Lamar Odom was the one that I really went at like that. You know, and then I was talking about his mother. And I didn't know his mother had just passed. And oh. I said a lot of bad things to him, and I really regretted that. And he went into the locker room, and he told his agent, and his agent, well, and my agent was there, and they talked. And my agent came and got me out of my locker room and said that the kid, the young, Lamar was a young kid at the time, and he was, and he was very upset, and he was very emotional. 92, and afterwards, we realized there was more than one Frosty. <laughs> It's dudes like that where, you know, that's why things happen off the court between players and their friends and things like that. But it's extremely disrespectful. You need, to, you need to watch how he talks to other men. And I had to go over there and I had to go and apologize because if I would have knew that his mother had just passed, it wouldn't have never been that way. I said a lot of, Christina, I said a lot of, I said a lot of bad things to a lot of guys. And I heard a lot of guys' feelings. And that was just me. It wasn't personal. It was just something that to get them out of their game. So nothing was off limits. Nothing was off limits. I never, I never said, I, I said anything that I wanted to. I talk about your mother. I talk about your, your father. I talk about your kids. I talk about your, your wives. Kids. Yeah, I'll say anything to get them mad. Walk me through the trash talking episode between you and Michael Jordan. It looked very intense, and I'm about to shut up. Tire the fuck out of him. You just gotta tire him out. And I kept. Hitting him and then banging him and hitting him and banging him. It took a toll on Mike. It took a toll. And then <laughs> so resting him a little bit. And then the, the, the series changed. And I wish I could have did it earlier. I don't know if the outcome would have been different, but it, it, it was a difference. <laughs> with me. And, and beating him down a little bit. The glove. I had no problem with the glove. I had no problem with... Gary Payton. Well, you know what? During the, during the time when I was in the NBA, he was the man. You right. know what I'm saying? So my my mentality was always to always take the tougher guy. So Michael was a was always a pleasure for me to guard. You know, everybody say was he the toughest? No, I don't think he was the toughest. He was the funnest for me to guard because what I was trying to do is, is I was trying to prove to them people that I can be somebody of great as a great scorer and then go back at him because a lot of people were scared of him. Right. And when you're scared of somebody, it's, it's never gonna work. So when you make somebody understand that you're not scared of them and they're a premier player and you go back at them, it's gonna put them on their toes to say, okay, this, this dude ain't scared. Right. He's got offensive skills too, and he go back. And he ran his mouth a lot, like I did. Right. And I wasn't backing down, and he wasn't backing down, and that's why it was so fun. It was competitive. And we can say anything to each, each other during that time. We can talk about anybody, parents, uh, anything. It wouldn't take it personal. Mike right. felt his. Yeah, he did. Now, that's what people want to see. Right. People don't want to see you going over here guarding that person. Right. Yeah, they want you to guard that dude because right. y'all both are the, are the premier players on your team. So it's starting to happen. It wouldn't have happened back in our day. But like I said again, this is their era. Absolutely. Who's the best, uh, I guess best or worst, uh, trash talker? GP. I played with GP. I played against GP. He, he just didn't care. And the crazy thing about GP on the court, he was like that off the court. Like, if he saw you in the mall, <laughs> maybe that time I crossed you up, big fella, and I gave you that thing, you know, that, and you almost put your arm out of socket. You ain't call me, boy. I'm a Hall of Fame. I'm first ballot, boy. I'm first ballot. Who are the best trash talkers of your era, Grant? Uh, you know, I think early on, when, when you really could, I don't, I don't feel like they trash talk now as much, or they, they're not allowed to. I think the league has cleaned that up. But it was definitely Gary Payton. I mean, Gary Payton was, uh, you know, I mean, I just, I remember our point guard when, you know, early on in my career, he, he didn't want to bring the ball up against Gary. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really kind of how I started bringing the ball up and playing point forward. Gary would talk to whoever, talk to refs, players, coaches on other teams, fans. fans. Yeah. He talked nonstop and, uh, and backed it up. So he was the guy that, you know, I think was the ultimate. And, 
I, it was a little personal. He got a little personal at times with folks. But, I mean, I think, you know, that's, that's basketball. You're trying, like you say, you're trying to get an advantage. Yeah. You're trying to get over on somebody. And if you if you backed down or you showed that you were scared, oh. then he had you. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you are new. And here are two new episodes that you may enjoy. So if you enjoyed this one, be sure to check out these two. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.